Isn't bravery those with the clearest vision of what is before them? Danger, glory, pain, tears, and yet they still go out omitted. I desired you. I got you. I desired your company. I got even more. Your virginity. Glory not in it. It is because of the honor which surrounds you. It indeed takes the royal and noble honors of kings and princes to take that which you took from me. Drop the subject. Is that an order? I implore you, in your graciousness, to not remain a moment. Better. And I'll try not to. words that I'd particularly be ushered into the castle in this manner. And I'm sure the guests would have said that to thousands of others. Something tells me that my finger will be adorned with the royal bridal honor. The prince's engagement ring. <laughs> I have never seen you more blissful, royal one. Save me your flattering tongue, Kiera. Oh, I forbid myself to tread that path. At least not tonight. Not ever. His Majesty. Ah, son, father. Oh, my heart is merry and my soul is swollen with pride. Not the pride of a king to his um, kingdom, but that of a father to his son. Oh, you have indeed made me proud, my son. My lips are sealed, my tongue tied. Father, you are the God I see. For I came into your home a peasant. But today, royalty questions my buttocks. I am not a God, son. All I am is a man on whom honor is bestowed. The same honor I shared with you. But remember, the royal honor is not complete without a bride. Take one. I remember a wise man once told me, marriage is a promise of eternal love. And as a man from a home of honor, I dare not see it otherwise. Ah, the wise man is older now. Though the crown still rests upon his head, 
And what he now seeks are not just the pleasures of the kingdom, but of him that calls him father. Perhaps then I shall begin the search for my bride. Search? Uh, I wouldn't say it hasn't come to my notice that a certain maiden has been seen around you lately. They say he's the daughter of my friend, Benny Williams. <laughs> it is a surprise to know the kind of matters that are brought before the king, or that, 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 that pertains to the kingdom. Ah, she is glamorous. Ah. Oh, yes. Her status, though not royal, but elite. And such a union symbolizes uh, the magical symbiosis in, in, in marriage between two great hearts. Father, even the subtle fur that engulfs the lamb can mask the devouring claws of a lioness. It will be wise to know if this lamb feeds from the grass of the field. Oh. Never have I seen such wisdom deposited on such a young shoulder. But remember, a wealthy bride is your shorty. Your guests are waiting. Uh, we will talk some more. Father, I desire to kiss your ring. For though I call you father, you're also my king. of his mouth, like the sound of the mighty water wheels, his fury, like the strike of a thunder across the dark and the skies, a crown of wisdom, an emblem of righteousness, a purity of heart, and a throne settled on divinity. The pride of a throne, and even the castles, in all its graciousness, cannot be compared to the smells of a multitude of subjects. Though there is a throne, but without you to bow to it, there will be no king. You all have come to celebrate me, but I will, more than ever, celebrate you. I thank you all for coming. Let us make merry. Music, please. A damsel sitting beside you tonight will not be a bad idea. Your grace. Do you have anyone in mind? Your grace. May I present before your presence a glamorous princess the nugget of gold, the treasures of beauty, and the fortune of charm. 
Miss Lisa Williams to be your royal acquaintance. Your Grace. My father seemed to have taken quite a liking to you. It is typical of royal not to deny that which the heart feels. What do you desire of me, my prince? Just a dance. Do me the honor of a dance. There's a melody in my heart. I find myself humming softly. Not to the music, though, but something else. Your beauty. And indeed, I am strengthened by the feel of you dancing in my arms. You're beautiful. The royalty that surrounds you has indeed filled your tongue with words. When the lips say one thing and the eyes utter another, it becomes ironical. Ironical? begging at your feet for your love. And then you will clutch your arms around him for good. Unfortunately, I, I don't have that to offer. Not for the glitters of gold, or the precious diamond stones or silver. What are you, a nun? 
No, Stephanie. I'm not a nun. I'm just a girl with pride and dignity. You can wake up. Those are virtues which bring nothing but poverty. Well, is it that easy for you girls? To let go at the slightest of impulse, at the slightest weight of a dollar bill? You know, as ridiculous as this may sound, some of us are more passionate about other things. Like having a university degree, for instance. Who ever told you that a university degree is the only pedestal you need in life? Most often than not, it is too frail a ladder to climb on, especially when you desperately need to rise above the chalk and spears of the struggling world which we live in. When you consider that goal, our options becomes easy. <laughs> Just save your breath, Laura. Can't you see this is headed nowhere? At least let us do her the favor of an explanation. Just maybe this case could just fall off our eyes. Well, the scales you talk about are what makes me who I am. For no man has felt the softness of my thighs or press of skin close to my in pleasure. And I don't even know whom is worthy of that pleasure. Wait, wait. I'm really curious. What is it you want from a man? What? Since wealth and fame means nothing to you, what do you want? I don't know what I want or what I desire. Maybe I want nothing. No. Nothing? As usual, my prince, to wash your feet. I wish to be left alone. Anything troubling my prince? It has indeed been days since the last feast of the palace. Three days, my prince. Three days, and yet no phone call. Oh, would it be stupid if I ask who the ha is, my prince? Kiara. Do not toil with my emotions because I do not have the patience to pat my face with a smile for your chest. Have you tried calling her, my prince? Over a hundred times in the last hour and yet no response. Strange. I must say. What would you have me do, Roya Wong? Send words to her? Like the speed of lightning? I will gladly do. Will that be noble? My prince, I've never desired a woman all my life. I wouldn't have an answer to that. Very well then. Give me the royal orchestra. Let them play me a tune. And give me the maidens. Let them cushion my back with a massage. I intend to wander her thoughts far from me. <laughs> Prince, 
he sees his room like a lion with a broken claw. His heart not troubled by the wrinkles of Prince Wood, but by the thoughts of a maiden. My son is in love. It appears so, Your Majesty. Oh, with whom, Kiara? Whose beauty strikes his heart? Hmm? Lisa Williams, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, sound the trumpets, throw open the gates of the palace, and usher in this bride that I may give my blessings. <laughs> Not so fast, Your Majesty. <laughs> mm -hmm. He hardly proposed. What? Oh, what is he waiting for? The rainbow needs no more than a shower to grace the sky. Kiara, go to him. Calm him down. Do everything in your power to calm him down. Go, Your Majesty. Bathe me with the waters of royalty. Let me swim then, immersing myself in the splendor which they offer. Maids throwing roses on my feet, servants bowing obedience. And the throne which men honor as a cushion for my bow. Your drink, man. And what was that about? A taste of power, authority, royalty if you'd like. Shall I call her so she can wipe the dust off your feet? Or perhaps you'd like to wait till I grace the palace, where maids like thirst-stricken horses would lick your feet if you so desired. <laughs> oh my God, Lisa, that's so good. Anyway, as he called, the prince, I mean. My phone has been off like we agreed. <laughs> wow, really? good. Yeah. Sure. So, what now? We will wait. It is in the crowds of wells to show patience, even in the most difficult of time. And for how long will this test of love linger? Like gold, every human feeling is refined in the fire of time. Love, being the very essence of life, grows through time. So the hearts are melted in oneness. Hmm. True. Very true. I could hear your thoughts racing off like a horse on a dusty plain. Father. <laughs> Mild evening, son. Ah. <sighs> The feel of the wind against my chest is quite soothing. More soothing than the feel of the rose petals against your feet? Not even your royal scepter, father. <laughs> Son, a king is not always a king. This evening, I have uh, forbidden the maids to throw roses at my feet. I wish to forget the splendor of royalty. Strange. Very strange, Father. Ah, there are other things more strange, like the refusal of my son to take a bride. It's foremost. You've always told me to follow my heart, Father. I'm fighting with my choice. Ah, but your choice is obvious. Take a step. Father, even the bravest of men fear the choices they make. For in time, he will stare them in the face like the spare of an enemy. Mm. You have indeed spoken like a prince. But to really dissect the matter of love, one needs to reason void of nobility, royalty. Ask a hand in marriage. 
Oh, and my heart will soar like the eagle. Soon, father. Soon. Nadi. Just where have you been, Nadi? We searched virtually everywhere for you. Including the library where everyone had expected you to be. Yeah, I know. I left the campus earlier today. I went to see my sister. She's dying of kidney failure. And the doctor said that the dialysis cost a fortune. And being the helpless orphans that we are, there's, there's just no one single person to ask for help. There are so many things which burden our hearts, Nadine. The more we run away from the possibilities of engaging them in a fight, the more helpless we become. The harder life is. Except like us, we have decided to fight. Fighters! That is what we are. Refusing to become peasants, we have taken our destiny, our future into our own hands. Okay, okay, please, enough of all this moody talk, Travis. And Madden, so in my need to change of clothes. I will go this for you. That is beautiful. Um, it's nice. You could wait to the party, you know. What party? The top hierarchy members of the SRC political party are hosting a few members of parliament, ministers, and ambassadors of the neighboring West African states on Friday night. Oh, God. The There's a need for a surgery. If not, you will lose her. She's barely alive. What do we do, doctor? She's the only one I have. I don't want anything to happen to her. Without a new kidney, she will die. Okay. Take my kidney. I understand how you feel. But I can't just take your kidney into her body. Your blood tissue must match that of hers. But doctor, we've done several checks before and my kidney, my blood tissues are compatible with her. Take mine. Okay. What are her chances? 50-50. The cost of kidney transplantation is very expensive. You will need help. Doctor. Nothing but orphans. I've gone everywhere. I've called everyone that I know. Nobody wants to help. Please. This is my sister. I don't want her to die. I don't want anything to happen to her. Honestly, I feel for you. That life is expensive, my dear. It costs money to save life. I 
won't let anything happen to you. I'll get the money. I promised Mother that I was going to take care of you. to Senator Lu, eh? he will keep you company. All right? And this one, to Senator Wanchuku. of my virginity. Nadine, you a virgin? Not anymore. I have sold my pride. I have offered myself, my treasure, for a meal. flames because I have no need for it. And what is this display about? What? An attack of conscience? Guilt? For that price, I sold my dignity. I offered my pride. I'm clothing myself in shame. And what is wrong with you losing your virginity? 99% of the girls you see today are not virgins. And you're not better than them, are you? Just this morning, I got a call. My sister is dead. Oh my God. And I couldn't save her. I couldn't save her. I couldn't save my sister. I couldn't save the money. Nadine, cheer up, please. I'm gonna save my sister. Nadine. Calling at your feet, especially if he's a prince. Oh, yeah, if he's yeah. a prince, keep calling. Keep calling. There we go. She's so happy right now. She's good. She's good. She's good. She's good. I'm so happy. Keep calling. Oh my God, feels so good. Keep calling, little boy. I'm 
want you to wash your hands, okay? Are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can only leave me wanting you more if you do this. Sure. Lisa, don't mess this up. I won't. Come on, come on, come on. You look good. You look good. Make yourself comfortable, Your Grace. Go. Announce my presence at once. That will not be necessary. I can now see the reason you're not picking my calls. And I do not intend to keep that away from you either. <laughs> Save your face a frown. I was with someone considerably more important to me. Your father? No. There is a man upon this kingdom that is more important to you than I am. Think of me as no child, Richard. For the piece of me you took was not given out of foolishness, but out of my will. And it is my will to give it to another. Spill the name of this man. <laughs> Though he wishes to conceal his presence, I will. As I speak with you now, the president is lying on my bed. He flew in from the AU summit this afternoon, and every second counts. So if you don't mind, Your Grace, I'd like to return to him. Take me to a place nice and quiet. I want to be alone, where I'll have no one bow to me in reverence. What? Me? Yes, you. Do I need to tell you to stop looking at me? Good Lord, what insolence. Do you have the slightest idea who you're speaking to? And does it look like I care? You are one embittered, ill-mannered woman, you know. Oh, listen, listen. You don't know anything about me, okay? You don't know anything about me. Do I need to know more? I mean, the hurt is written in your eyes. I beg your pardon. Who are you anyways? 
My name is Richard, Prince of Kumalo, a son of the royal stool. Oh, how nice. And what is a prince doing in the middle of the forest? Or has the palace become so boring? Do not refer to royalty in such despicable manner. Oh, yeah, 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 wait, wait, I get it. <laughs> they all bow at your feet and kiss your toes, right? But I'm not one of your subjects, okay? What if as a prince I command you to bow at my feet? I think you should try something else. Be more creative, maybe. You disobey me? Tell me, what punishment awaits me? A fine, a scourge, or a curse? Worse. Worse, my dear. An evening with me at a royal guest house. Here. Here's my card. Since you already know my name, what's yours? Nadine. Nadine, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Friday will be perfect. I trust you'll call. What is criminal to trust a stranger? I'm not promising to honor this. The choice is yours. Either way, we'll meet again. I tried calling him last night and he wouldn't pick up. That's strange. Strange? That's worrisome. Calm down, Lisa. Can't you see what he's trying to do to you? Put you back in your own coin. I'm beginning to think I would stretch things. Maybe I pushed it beyond limits. No, you didn't. Seriously, Liz. I think Clara is right. He's simply playing a game. Maintain the silence. He will come around. You think so? I know so. Has anyone seen my library card? No. No? no. Oh, Jesus. Steph? Uh, look, I've been in this university for three years and I don't know what a library card looks like. <laughs> so don't ask me. <laughs> hey, this is not funny. I need, I need to find my library. I don't know why I kept it. You know, Andrew, have you seen it? <laughs> Dude, I don't know why I kept it. Why are you laughing? You think it's funny? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you just help me and look for my card, please. I don't even know why she's in this school in the first place. You don't know what a library card looks like. <laughs> oh my. What? Have you seen it? Prince Rich Jeffrey. The royal prince of the Imagine. It looks like someone has been busy doing other things. So I'm reading herself to death. Oh, please, just come on. I just met him somewhere. Are you kidding me? I mean, his card has the royal engrave of arms. And a number attached to it. Well, he even asked me to dinner. Dinner? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, what's today? Friday. Oh, yeah, it's today. I had a oh. dinner date with the oh, prince, so. but unfortunately, I'm not going. What? Was that talk some mentally debrayed woman? Please tell me that was a joke. Because you were going to dine with the prince. No, I'm not joking, Steph. I'm not going. Come on, this guy is a prince. He's a prince, for heaven's sake. <laughs> so, what difference does it make him being a prince? I don't get it. But he's got to lose nothing. What you do, you honor his call. And then, so in the feel of the evening, and then you return a maid who has dined with the prince. Simply, simple. And what if the prince want more from me? A prince can want no more from you. You wake up and smell the tone. No more than an evening in which you shall give you a taste of reality. And the next morning, you were gone. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Yes. What, are you, what are you doing? Call oh. him. Who wants? Call him. You tell him that we are going to grace his presence. We? <sighs> okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. You tell him that you're going to grace his presence. I mean, it's not wise to stumble upon a man, let alone one who has honor to his name. Okay. Uh, but you're not calling him, right? It's 
Damask. Brother with silk satin, my prince. Too formal. Wow. This is it. Skin suited velvet. Sequenced with sunset red. My prince, this will be very, very fitting. Well, I must say that uh, the feel of red sequence against my flesh is familiar. Isn't there a garment that is yet to be worn? This has never been won, Nadi. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, uh, no, this is too flashy. Uh, nothing. <laughs> flashy is what you need to be. Wait, wait, is, is there nothing else I can wear? There's yet another robe, my prince. Sewn with the finest knitted wool. To which certain precious stones of the East are attached. That sounds perfect. But I'm yet to see it. Okay? Okay, Nadine. I'm done. Whoa. Mm. Wow! Oh. 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 Yeah, well, well, I can see the smiles on your faces, but there's no way I am going to wear this. Nadine, who you are and what you feel is of no importance to a man of noble birth. The least you can do is to clothe yourself with the beauty as I desire to see. Well, the beauty that you speak of was buried in the sadness of my heart. The very first day he laid his eyes on me. And yet, he offered to dine with me. Look, Nadine, the very essence of royalty is not simplicity. You can have it, young lady. Would all wait for you at dawn to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, you can start a laugh right now. No, there's no way I am going to. No, 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 the duties of a prince surely are more worthy than the matters of love. Why do you speak like a fool, Sierra? Was he not the figure of royalty that he is before his arms fell the softness of my flesh? Yes, sir. You need to be more patient because that which is destined for a man remains his. I have no patience for the trappings of destiny. I shall take mine in my own hands. So? I am going to the castle. I shall stare him in his face and have him lust for that which he once desired. Quite this ridicule? How dare you grace my presence in such embarrassing, degrading simplicity? What? You wish to put the royalty to a test of scorn? Is that what it is? Neither of both, my friend. I come before you as I am. Maybe without grace, but with the openness of my heart. Indeed. But you had enough time. Mare bath. Beauty treatment. Yet none of the rumors of glory stares. But well for you. I was thought that when you come in the presence of a king, rather than expect a gift, one should bring a gift and lay at his feet. Gift. 
and it was my mother's too. It was a symbol of my past, present, and future. And all of it, I gave to you. I have no need of it. Keep it. For some, I call you foolish, but I do not. Perhaps it lacks the glitters of gold and the specks of precious stones that royalty baits you with. Indeed. But one thing it does not lack is sincerity. And the smallest of gift that comes with sincerity will move the hearts of the greatest of kings. I must say, I am quite pleased by your tolerance. Please, join me. Let's wine and dine, for you have earned a place at my table. The maiden with whom the prince had a dance on the festive night, my lord. Usher her into our presence immediately. I desire to see. What a delight that I now meet the king. Oh, refrain from it. For soon, you also shall have royalty bestowed upon you. Not if the prince lingers no further to ask my hand, your majesty. Oh, he shall. And yet he has neither called nor sent words to know the state of his bride. It has been one week since I last heard of him, your majesty. Well, I shall right that wrong immediately. Tell the prince we seek his presence. Your Majesty, the prince is away from the castle. Well, trouble not your heart. He is a prince and does as he pleases. But he listens to the words of my mouth. Before the sun rises on the morrow, the voice that shall awaken you shall be that of the prince. I promise you. Thank you, Your Majesty. I shall take my leave now. Go well, my daughter. When you stare so deeply into my eyes, what do you hope to achieve? Do you want to read my thoughts or know the state of my heart? None. All to provoke the desire I need to lay with you. Indeed, sir. I am no different from a thousand others who have graced your bed. So? Would you then refuse if I make an advance? With every bit of strength. 
I will. Then you have a price. I'm not a buyer nor a seller of love. Then, what if a man offered a more treasured gift? Gold? It perishes with time. Diamond? I do not fancy precious stones. And what about a kingdom? The only thing I would accept is your heart. Tell me, who are you? I'm a maiden, an orphan. You stand not impressed. Whatever it is, please do not show me the scorn you have for me. Not pressure me to live with you. Tomorrow before the break of dawn, I shall be gone. It is a special day. My birthday. I do not want to spend it in tears. Lie. For I shall stroke your hair while I watch you sleep. For my heart tells me you deserve more than a night with me. Take this for your troubles. I wish never to see you again. You mean to tell me that my son laid in the arms of a strange woman and you didn't deem it fit to bring the matter to me? Your Majesty, who are they to swing matters of the prince into your ears? Their hearts may know it, but their lips quiver to let it out, my lord. Mm. Where is the prince now? Your Majesty, he ordered us back to the palace, and away he went with one of the cars. You are telling me that the prince is now driving alone in this city? Of what use are you then? Of what use are you? Now I want you to comb the city. Find the prince and bring him back to me at once. My lord. It's amazing what a man's heart is drawn to. What is your heart drawn to? You.
You didn't take this. I told you, if, if it's for sale, then it's no love. Happy birthday. Please, I beg of you, refuse not my gift, for no one forbids the gift from a royal heart. You've never seen a prince get down on his knees. Some say it's unworthy of a noble. Some say it's frailty of those who wear the crown. I say, if love makes me weak and frail, then I want more of it. Nadine. Will you marry me? as quickly as I can. Nadine, for me to live without you will be to seize the breath of my lungs. Anyway. A brand new baby. Richard is disappointing me, Clara. It's almost noon. Is he still coming? I don't know. I've been trying to call his phone the whole time and switched off. But his majesty did give you his word, didn't he? He would have sworn to it if I had insisted. Then there's no point getting apprehensive here. The word of the king is surely power. So relax. Don't get yourself worked up over nothing. Relax. I said eight in search of you. Did you not think it wise to let us know your whereabout? We own the city, Baba. Oh. And the maid who grazed your bed last night. Who is she? Father, she. Uh, Say no more. Return to your bride. She is worried. But it is very, very important to talk about this. <laughs> about what? About uh, your wedding? About your honeymoon? <laughs> All that has been taken care of, and I assure you that it will be the best. Anywhere, in any kingdom, throughout the world. May I announce the presence of the royal bride, Miss Lisa Williams. It was strange for the words of the king to say, Your Majesty. The nobility of your words jolted my thoughts, and no other thought is more. 
comely than the union of you and my son. Gracious is your sight, my lord. Oh, and blessed be my eyes, for they have seen today. I say, set the royal banquet for me that we may wine and die. Come, my dear, follow. Lisa cannot be my bride. Not in this life. James, I want you to follow Richard. I want you to monitor his movement. I have to know whether or not he's seen another woman. Oh no, that crown is worth battling for. And I will spill blood if that's what he takes. Do your lips speak truth, Kiara? I swear by the years of my services, Your Majesty. Mm. Mm. Then, who is this maiden who has my son's heart in her hands? Who is she? A princess? It could be fair to say that grace was upon her. But royalty is far from it, Your Majesty. Mm. Perhaps then. She is of aristocratic birth, an heiress to an empire. <laughs> she lives in a campus hostel, Your Majesty. What are you telling me, Kiara? I have only said that which my eyes have seen and my ears have heard, Your Majesty. Usher the prince into our presence the moment he returns. My lord. Would you believe it if I told you that Richard is seen some whore? Or who the hell is this bitch that has the effrontery to trade tackle with you? Perhaps we need to pay her a visit. God, she needs to be warned. I'm sure you know who I am. Sorry? Does it matter who you are? Tell us the meaning of this outrage. Hey, you watch the serpents in your mouth. I see you have guts. And it looks like you come prepared for war. You're no match for my war. Anyway, in case you don't know, I'm Lisa Williams. Stay away from Prince Richard if you want peace. I don't have to say this again. Oh, please, get out of my sight. What did you just hey. say? Hey. You give up that thought. Else you shall have demons to contend with. Ah, out of my path. It's no use sucking after a man who is not yours. Go home, Lisa. Go lick your wounds. You have just drawn the lioness out of its cave. <laughs> 
Only mayhem will follow. The claws of a tigress equals that of a lioness. So you name your battlefield and let the war begin. You speak of war as someone who is killed in it. Believe me, it shall be your carcass lying on that battlefield. Waste no time. Make a haste called virtues to a feast. We have no fear of death. <laughs> this day, you have set a field to flames, and even you shall be consumed in it. Tell him that. I don't really want any trouble. But you have to be strong enough to fight for your destiny. Why have you decided to make ridicule of me in a school campus? That peasant called you and soon you hasten here like a slave would do to a master. How disappointing it is to see a royal serving a maid. As peasant as she is, I honored her. But soon, I shall clothe her with splendor and glory till all of nature shall bow at her feet. Gold. Silver, diamond, fabrics of wool and silk, precious of all stones, will I make hers. And most of all, the honor of the throne. How dare you? How dare you speak such of a woman before me? After taking my pride, how dare you light a fire in my heart? Foolish of you to speak of pride when you offer your body for dignity. Are you tired of the taste of the president? I told you it was just a game to make you jealous. I do not have any intimacy with the president. Very well, then. My heart now seeks another. From this day henceforth, I forbid you. Stay out of my life. You lie, Richard. You lie. Not after taking that which is precious to me, my virginity, and making me a woman of no pride and dignity. I detest your pride and guts, and this so-called arrogance you carry about town. There's no point flogging a dead horse, Lisa. For I have engaged the maiden which my heart seeks. The shame, the disgrace. This cannot be happening. What do we do next? Let's go back. 